Today is Monday, so that is Military Monday. Um, if you guys didn't know, we started doing these every single Monday now. Right now, we're talking about Afghanistan, and if you guys didn't see the two previous videos, you might go watch those ones as well. Everything is being done in chronological order. I will link them down below, so you guys can watch those if you want. Now, <clears throat> this video is after me being in Afghanistan for a couple months. I'm not going to tell you guys all the small firefights I got into, because those are just kind of pointless, and they have literally no meaning behind them. I mean, if you're just driving around, you get shot at for about five to ten minutes. That's not really anything to, like, have a cool story about. That's just an everyday kind of a occurrence over there. Not an everyday occurrence, but it is, it, is a, it is an occurrence that happens a lot, so it's really not that big of a deal. So now we're moving into a time uh, which we call spring offensive. That's when the Taliban send over all their guys from Pakistan or from outside countries. The ground's starting to not be so hard. And there's not snow on the ground. It's starting to get warm, and it's easier to fight. Like It's not as hot out. It's not as cold out. It's nice, nice weather to fight in. That's pretty much what it is. So at this time, I'm with, attached to a SEAL team in kind of a kind of a more remote portion of Afghanistan. It was really fun. We were out in the middle of nowhere and we rode around in side by sides. These same ones right here except they were they were tan and they had no doors on them and they had 50 cows and guns on them. This one does not, unfortunately. So we go into this area, we know it was gonna be really bad, uh, which we're fine with that. You know, that's our job over there is to go and clear white space and just make life easier for the civilians that are over there. That's our entire job. You know, that's that's what we're there for, is to kill the bad people. When I was over there now, they're probably handing out cupcakes and God knows what else they're doing. I have no clue. But when we were there, that's what our job was, was to kill the bad guys. And we were very good at it. So we go rolling to this area. There's about 15 to 20 side-by-sides full of guys. Uh, we usually only put two in each side-by-side. -side. Sometimes we put a third in the back, but that was very rare. So we're probably rolling, I don't know, 20 to 30 dudes, probably maybe a little bit more. Somewhere about 20, 30 people. We go into this area, and the first thing we see are four farmers. I was a third, third one of these back, so I, I was kind of at the beginning. I saw, um, we saw four, four farmers, and two, and they all four, excuse me, for the four farmers that were standing there, they all dropped their stuff, and they turned around, and they started running. Now, since we were on side-by-sides, we caught two of the guys, but two of them got on their bikes and skirted between the hills. I'm going to use this whiteboard behind me to kind of give you guys a little bit better view of to what I'm talking about, and I will also insert some pictures here in a little bit because I do have some pictures and videos from this day. Now we go, we go in there and they get the two guys and they're interrogating them. And everybody else at this point knows we parked all of our hills, I just parked all of our, parked all of our side by sides along the base of the hill. So if we have to come down and, and uh, get the hell out of there, we could really easily. So I'm going up this hill. You know what? I'm gonna pause here and I'm gonna go over to the whiteboard and I'm gonna explain it in more depth so you guys have like a visual of what I'm talking about. Okay, so you guys can see this. This green is us. We came in right here. We came in right here. This is us. We land right here. This is where the opium farmers were. There was four of them. Two of them skirted off. There was like a road that went through here. They got on their bike and went through it, okay? They're interrogating two down here. This was the hill that I was on. There's a hill right here. There's a hill way over here. We'll call this hill one, two, and three. There's also a hill back over here. This is hill four, all right? As you could tell, I might have already done this once and kind of messed it up. So I go climbing up this hill. I got me and my scar. I'm right here. There's another sniper right here. And there's a couple other guys that end up over here later on in this, in, in this little tick that we got in. Now, a lot of the guys got over here. All the big guns, all the big machine guns are over here. We got one machine gun here, one sniper rifle right there with that guy, and then a sniper rifle or a scar with me. Excuse me. I had a scar. There was... Uh, three seals on this hill right here. Now there was one seal and my buddy way over here, all by their lonesome. These, this hill, you just got to remember these hills and where they're at because this is about to be very important to what's about to happen. So this way over here, this area, this is the village. We'll just put V-I-L. That's where the village was and there was another hill right here actually that I don't want to forget because this is very important. There's another hill right here which kind of made for like a valley right here for where I'm looking down, okay? Just remember that. <sighs> okay. So I'm sitting on a hill. I'm sitting on a hill three, okay? And hill two and one and four, like you gotta remember where those hills are. I mean, you see like, rewind, here I'll, I'll just, we'll see if I can do it. Remember that, I'm on hill three and hill two is in between me and one. Okay, so in Afghanistan, there's a lot of stuff that kind of, that can go wrong when it comes to radio communications. There's a lot of hills and a lot of metal in the ground, like a lot of metal, which messes up with the radio frequencies. So there was two guys on hill one, 
three guys on hill two, and there was me and a couple of the guys and a sniper on hill three, and then a lot on hill four with all the big machine guns and automatic grenade launchers and stuff like that. Now, hill one calls up on the radio, and, he, and I can hear him. It's my buddy. He says, I've got... Oh, oh, excuse me, I, I gotta, we gotta go back. So I get to the top of the hill, I get to my hill number three, EOD sweeping, they don't find anything, no, no IEDs or anything on top of the hill. Now, I'm sitting up on top of the hill, and everybody starts noticing it. There's probably about 30, 40, maybe 50 female and children leaving the village, going out the back, and we don't notice any men, like no men whatsoever. I mean, that's when you should know, right then, that shit is about to hit the fan, is when you don't see one man leaving all you see is a bunch of females and a bunch of kids get up and they just book it out of town so we all start taking up our we all start taking up our positions just kind of like scanning waiting um and i'm looking down this little valley i can see the guys on hill two okay the guys on hill two are right here and i'm sitting right here so i can see them but they're, they're pretty far away they're probably about four or five hundred meters away on this hill and guys on hill one call up and they say we have three guys, three mams wearing blue, uh, crawling up a hill with AKs. And instantly my stomach just dropped because I knew, holy shit, it's about to go down. This was about five to ten minutes after we saw the female and, and kids leave. So my buddy on Hill 1 calls up and he says, I've got the three guys in blue and white crawling up the side of a hill wearing AKs. And I could hear it, the LT can hear it, but the guys on Hill 2 couldn't hear it. And the guys on Hill 2... Okay, so hill two is in between me and one, of course. The Taliban were coming up the back side of this hill, and the SEALs were on this side. The guys, they had no clue that they were coming up the back side of the hill because they couldn't hear the radio transmission. Afghanistan is really weird, like I said, with radio transmission. Real bad. So instantly, right when I saw it, or right when I heard that, I, I, I looked down my scope, and I could see one guy. I saw one guy myself, because the angle that I was looking at, I could see one crawling up on his hands and his knees. This trying to, or not his hands and his knees. He was on his hands and his feet crawling really fast up the side of this hill. And I looked to the guy that's sitting right here. And he said, he said some, some, some words that I'm not going to say on YouTube. And basically right when he said that, contact was initiated from somewhere in the village. It wasn't directly on us at that point. They, they initiated contact, I think, on the guys on four. But the Taliban that were crawling up hill two didn't see us. They didn't see me and the other sniper that were sitting there. So he instantly started shooting. And he dropped those three dudes within three or four shots. It was just bam, bam, bam. And they were all three of them were down. Which was good because the thing is if we got to the top of the hill, then they would have had a fighting position and then looked down on the seals that were on this, this side of the hill. So that kind of goes on. So we instantly got three down at that point, which is very good. Um, I couldn't tell you how many people we killed throughout this day. Um, probably 10 to 15, I would make the, a good assumption. So after those three, the first three get down, then the Taliban know that we're sitting on this hill. And that's when all hell kind of breaks loose on me and the guy that's sitting next to me. We're sitting there, and now we're trying to pick out engagements in the, in the village where we can see muzzle flash coming from. And then all of a sudden, we take the most intense, at this point, the most intense RPK and PKM fire I've ever received in my entire life was on that hillside. We were standing there. I think I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it right now. And all I could do was return fire. <laughs> but think, what in the world am I doing? Because these rounds were hitting like, you, we were hitting so close right in front of us that the dirt was like spewing up like right in front of the, where we were shooting out of. This goes on for a little bit. We started getting some more targets. My buddy that's on Hill 1, they might, they may or may not, like if you look back on it now, they probably were a little bit too far away from, from the engagement where they probably should have been. But that's okay because they have a bunch of kahunas, they have some big old balls. And I give them credit for it now. But I know that they called up on the radio and they said they got some squirters and a good friend of mine that was sitting over there with the other SEAL, he said, I'm going to engage him. I'm going to get, I remember he just started shooting from way over here and he shot, and he, his first kill of the day was shooting a dude off a bike that was trying to squirt out, um, which is great because you never know what that guy could have been doing, could have went to the next village over and, you know, that's just the way it works. But he got his first there. But then they got pinned down, and that's when it started even getting worse. Because right when they shot, and then they knew where they were, they were giving up their positions. And that's kind of, I mean, you have to give up your positions at one point, but they had an advantage because they were so far ahead. And they were kind of, they were able to walk people on targets because no one knew where they were. But when they saw that, they had to eliminate that guy, which is good. Now, 
Now these guys, the guys over on Hill 1, were pinned down like crazy. The guys on Hill 2 couldn't do much because they were kind of in a very, very bad position. They didn't realize going into it they were in a bad position, um, but they were in a very bad position the way that their hill was. Uh, me and the other guys on Hill 3, which here's an image of that, uh, there's now five of us on the hill, or six of us on this one hill, uh, all in fighting musicians. And <clears throat> I just, I remember the guys on Hill 1, they were pretty much pinned down at this point. And close air support was coming in to kind of relieve. That's what it's kind of like. If you want to do a lull in fire, you call in air, air support so you guys kind of regroup because the Taliban will stop shooting. But right when they hear that, that, that air support's gone, that's when it will kick back up. And that's pretty much what happened. We had a lull in fire. We were basically checking ammunition, see how much we had left. And right when Kaz went away, I think it was, it was probably a couple of Apaches. That's probably what it was. Uh, a lot of times we didn't like using air support. We liked to actually fight them out. Because right when you brought in air support, it kind of like killed the fight and it was kind of over with. But we wanted to fight it out and kill as many as we could before leaving that area. So after Kaz left, um, my buddy and the other SEAL were still kind of in their area. And then right when they left and you couldn't hear the birds going doo -doo 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 anymore, you, the contact initiated again. Now, which we were fine with because we knew it was going to happen. But now this time they were really pinned down, like really pinned down. And they were pinned down by sniper fire. Now, they were pinned down by fi uh, sniper fire at this point, like really, really pinned down. Now, my buddy, he is nuts, absolutely, absurdly nuts. If you think you're crazy, this dude is a level above you. We've all done some dumb stuff in our life, but this one probably takes the cake. He, <laughs> they're pinned down by sniper fire. He had no idea where the sniper fire was coming from, but the guy that he was with could see the guy. He knew where he was. Like he had a, he had a beat on him. Like he had seen him, but the problem is, was getting his direction off the sniper to shoot at somebody else so he can eliminate the target. Because he was on the backside of the hill too, but the thing is, remember the guys on hill two, we couldn't see him. The guys on hill three couldn't see the guys on hill two the backside, but the guys on the backside of Hill 2 were able to see the guys on Hill 1. It was a big mess. Let's we'll just say it's a big mess. Now, the guy that I'm talking about with the big balls, crazy son of a gun, um, the, the, other, the seal that was with him says, I, I got eyes on, I just need you to draw fire, basically. So, drawing fire, uh, I also did it later on in this video, which you guys are going to hear in a little bit, but it's very, it's one of those kind of things where it's, you have to do it sometimes. And he drew fire in a very kind of funny way. Uh, you guys know what a burpee is? It's pretty much what he did to draw fire. So the guy that's with him says, all right, dude, I need you to, I need you to draw fire. And he jumps up, and the sniper shoots at him and misses, and he gets back down. But the thing is, the guy that was with him shot and missed as well. Missed, missed the Taliban guy. So now, now I've ever, I didn't know any of this at the time, by the way. I didn't know this happened until I got back. Um, and he told me the story. And he said he did do it twice. And he said the second time, he said, that's when it got scary, because the first time your adrenaline was going, but the second time you're like, oh my God, I gotta do this again. So he said he did another burpee, he stood up and jumped, and the sniper shot at him, but this time, the guy that he was with was, unable, was able to eliminate the target, which then gave them the freedom of movement to move forward, to come back to us, because they realize at this point that they're too far away, and they're crazy. That's pretty much all I gotta put it. Okay, so this is, this is when it starts to get even a little bit more Harry, I realized that I'm I'm probably down to about a mag and a half of ammo at this point because I was carrying a scar and they don't 762 versus 556 you don't carry as much ammo on your chest because it's just a lot more it's bigger. Um, with that being said, so I'm sitting here and I'm looking down in between one and two hills. I mean, excuse me, the second hill and the hill that's in between it. Like I said, so now you can there's a bead and there's on the in between these two hills. There's a collot or, or something. It was some type of building. It was a structure. There was a structure on the head of it. And I'm sitting there just looking. And my buddies that were over here that were too far away, they're about to move this way. So they start advancing forward and then they get re -pinned. Like they get pinned down again. Like they just, they're just in a very bad spot, we'll just say that. <clears throat> and now they got Taliban guys that are, <clears throat> just imagine there's, they're brushed up against the side of this hill right here. And those guys are like 100 to 200 meters on top of the hill over here on the other side, just right on the other side of the hill. And I'm sitting there and he's like, all right, we're going to start moving. And I remember me and the other guy, this is when we had to, we drew some fire on us. We stood up like we fully are just sitting there. Now we're standing up and we're just engaging, trying to get them to direct their fire towards us so those guys can start moving forward. And that's what happened. 
But at the same time, I saw these two guys. It was two guys stood up when my buddy and 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 the other seal were moving forward to come back to us, to come back to, to get closer to the, the group. The um, the Taliban just like simultaneously, like two guys, one in black, no, two two guys in black, started running, and they were like he was on like a full sprint to towards the second hill towards they were running, so they were running this way, and the Taliban guys were running like this, but they both had no clue that they were running, were going to meet each other at some point on this hill. Now, and that's when I started. I saw him, and he didn't, he apparently didn't know that I was, I was paying attention to that area, and I was carrying the scar, and I, we, we had knew, we had knew, by the way, step to the very beginning, when snipers get to an area, we laze talk, we, 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 we know how far certain distances are, so when we, first thing we got up there is we knew how far the building was, we knew how far the hill was, we knew how far this, this piece of structure was, so we can adjust fire to what we're shooting at really, really fast, so when we went up there, I knew how far to the target it was. And just adjusted my fire accordingly. And these two guys started running. And I remember that first one, like it was like it was plain as day. He was running and I just started engaging so quick with that scar. And he hit his like he was on a full full sprint. I don't know if it was complete luck. Maybe. I don't know. I'll take luck over skill any day. But I hit him and he hit his knees so fast and slid face first in that dirt. It was like and that was it. And I remember just sinking there. I and here's a picture of right after. So as you guys can see in the picture, I'm cheesing. You know, this is a big time for somebody in the sniper, your first kill ever. So anyway, with that, with that being said, that was the first one I saw. I remember I just looked at the guy. He had a helmet cam on, and this was just a still. This wasn't a photo. And uh, if you look at the photo or the photo that I just showed you guys, there's a bunch of, you'll see a bunch of brass laying around. But with that being said, the, the second guy that was behind him, right when he saw his buddy hit the hit the ground, he dude he stopped so quick, and he turned around and ran behind that hill, and it was pretty much it. With that point, but with that, I mean, this is why this this story is so important is, is you never know what's going to happen when you're over there. But me and the other guy, we got put in for these awards that I'll show at the very end of the video for this for this kind of stuff like drawing fire on yourself. And it's not just me that drew fire. It was the other guy that was with me. I'm not going to say it was just me and all these other guys. All these guys I'm with have balls. They're over there doing, it's just, when you're over there, you don't really think too much about it. But when I went back and I told the guy who was in charge of me the story of what happened, that's when it really just started moving forward. And he's like, I got to get you guys in for awards. And then I was like, yeah, that's kind of cool. But now looking back on it, it means absolutely nothing. Those awards mean nothing. So, anyways, get back to the story. So after I killed the guy, um, his buddy ran away, like I said. But the fire was still going on, but it was now it was becoming more pop shotish. Um, we had shot, like I said, I, I'm pretty sure we had we had a kill count by the end of the day, and I don't, honest to God, want to give you guys a fake numbers because I don't remember. But I'm gonna say it was probably around 10. It was probably a, a pretty serious number, probably solid number. And um, to the hill number two, then we started collapsing. And that's pretty much what you do after a firefight. You collapse, you reorganize, and you figure out what to do from there. Once we realized that I was down to, oh, I myself, I was down to like three or four rounds. Like, that's all I had on me. I was basically black on ammo. They called in uh, air support again. Like I said, we only use air, air support to exfil or if we're like really screwed. And at this point, we needed an exfil. We left a, uh, a pretty good impression, I would say, on that village. We didn't lose anybody. Uh, we did have a side-by-side -side roll down a hill. And that's, oh, that's another thing. That's why I, I will always only buy one of these. Because we have sank two of these side-by-sides in rivers and rolled them down a hill. And they still, still just trucking. That's why I use them. So, yeah, anyway, Kaz came in. We exfilled, and that was pretty much it. I left there with like three or four rounds left, which is crazy. That was a, um, that's my first day. Like I said at the very end of the video, I'm going to leave you guys. Well, I'm sitting in the middle of nowhere trying to tell you guys a story, but it's 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 the write-up for the award. Now, I don't want this to see as if I'm, <clears throat> I don't want any of these videos to see like I'm asking for like your thank you for your service or, or um or bragging. That is not even close to what it is. I have gone four years now with not telling really anybody any of these stories, and I felt like now I got an outlet. I use you guys as my outlet, and there you go. That's pretty much it. I'm glad I'm sweating my my nuts off right now telling the story. It's not even that hot out. Kind of got excited. Like I said, I uh. YouTube, YouTube has saved me. You guys have saved me. All the support you guys give me is the reason why I continue to do this. When I came back from Afghanistan, I had like an, an crazy amount of problems. I know there's a lot of veterans out there that have problems, but there's always, always a source 
for your, your issues. I'm telling you right now, there's always, always a source for your issues. Like, I don't really know how to explain it. Like, it's really hard to explain. Like, everybody comes back with some issues. Like, when I came back, I was, I was, I thought I was fine, but then I was trying to, like, really hard to adapt. Like, that's the hardest thing to do is trying to readapt to where there's just nothing. So, yeah, that's basically a message to all my veteran friends out there. It will get better. It may take some time, but it will get better. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, I'll see you guys next Monday. Man, I am sweating telling that story. I'll see you guys next Monday with another one of these stories. And stay tuned for that little write-up so you guys can read a little bit. I'm going to black out everybody's name that doesn't need to be involved. And Oh, oh yeah, real quick. To the officers that held the board for me not to get this award... Now, if you get put in for some type of award and you have like an enlisted guy, because I was enlisted, but if enough officers hold those kind of boards and say that they're not worthy of those kind of awards, at that time, you don't realize it, but you were destroying like that, that person's morale. Like if you just say they're not even worthy of any award whatsoever for the acts that they have done, while you sat on a fob and did absolutely nothing and ate hot chow and showered every day, and you come back and then you tell those guys they're not worthy of an award, that's when you need to reassess your life. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Yeah, to, to all the old, crusty officers that when we came back and we got put in for those awards, me and my buddy, we got put in for, I got put in for a bronze star with V and he got put in for a silver star. And then you go and you tell our chain of command that we're not even worthy of any sort of thing. At the time, it really, really, really bothered, bothered us. Because we're like, you guys sat on a fob and ate hot chow and had TV and internet and everything else. And did absolutely nothing. But you guys, of course, all you higher-ups, you guys got a bronze star for doing absolutely nothing. Sitting, working out, getting fat. All you younger lieutenants out there, don't be like those guys when you get up there. If any of you guys watch my videos, just, yeah. Listen to your NCOs. NCOs are awesome. And so are the LTs. Most LTs are awesome. Cool. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow.